Hello and welcome to Furious Tea Break, the side channel to Furious Driving, where we do stuff that doesn't quite fit on the main channel, like this episode, which is junk in the trunk. We've got stuff that you guys have sent in to show and tell and explore and enjoy and have a bit like the old gallery segment on uh, on Take Heart many, many years ago, which we all used to enjoy for a certain age. Right now, um, this is quite exciting because this is potentially the last time that we do this episode as treats from the seats because we're doing from the bonnet of the W123 Mercedes uh, because the Rover is about to be drivable. This car, thanks to, well, this is the first item to arrive. Nice new UASA battery for this aforementioned W123. It'll stop being a table very soon indeed. Then we're gonna move the Crown Victoria, move this, bring the Rover back in, and we can have the good old creaky boot of joy. It's every time we open the boot to get a new envelope, we have that lovely delicious we've all become so used to. However, for this last time though, we're gonna be going with the old Merc, and it's gonna be treats from the seats one last time. And already we've had one treat because we've got that lovely battery, which I'm very much looking forward to installing in this engine bay. Currently, thanks to the fact that we had to drill through this wall um, the other day to put the carport up, um, I've had to remove a lot of stuff from the shelves and this garage, believe it or not, is in even more disarray than usual, which is quite a lot of disarray. But anyway, I digress. I was gonna take a sip of my tea, but I realized I left it on the Freelander outside and it's a long walk to get it now. So I have to do without tea, which is quite hard work. Right, let's delve inside the W123 for the first time and see what we can find. Now, before we get into this Christmas special junk in the trunk, we've got a little bit of an announcement. You might've seen it all across the uh, social medias is a couple of days ago. March the 9th, save the date. There is something gonna be happening with Furious Driving, Hubnut and iDriver Classic. We've got big plans in the works. Can't say any more at the moment, but yeah, keep March the 9th free because something you might enjoy might be happening. So this, is a big chunky envelope which came to the address Furious Driving PO Box 477 Aylesford ME69LE. Remember that, can I send anything exciting over? A scalpel of doom or joy, possibly, depending how you're wielding it, I suppose. A standing knife, it's not really a scalpel, is it? Oh, it is a, oh, it's a mini related book. Mini related book. So it's stuff falling off the Mercedes. Mini workshop manual, how about that? A period mini workshop manual. Zoom out a bit. The manual, <laughs> the mechanical zoom out, stand further away. Wow, a BMC service publication, so that, that puts in a date. Oh, there's a card in there as well. Who's this from? We'll find out. Christmas card, like a Christmas card. It says, great YouTube, Matt. I enjoy all the problems to solve on your cars. Got this manual of a friend who once had a Mini in 1974 and I thought you might better use it from Mark in Barnsley. Thank you, Mark, I absolutely will. I've got the, uh, the Haynes manual, but it's amazing how different manuals leave out different things. So having different versions of the same manual, if you like, or the same period manual, is always very handy indeed. However, this is the proper one. You know, I've got the Rover versions of this kind of thing. And yeah, it's, oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, wow, I literally just opened it on the automatic transmission page. Just didn't even mean to do that. Super useful, that is, oh, fantastic. Oh, look at that lovely artwork. That is just beautiful, isn't it? A different age, as they say. Oh, that is fantastic, thank you, Mark. Thank you, wherever you are. That's lovely, that is really, really useful. That'll definitely make putting the old mini back together an awful lot easier. I've got a first Christmas card. Right. Let's see what else we've got lurking in seats for them, their treats. Okay, now this one I did pre-open because I kind of had a feeling I knew what it was gonna be and who it was gonna be from. First of all, Mark Simpson of that same name, um, Simpsons Classics. Now he, Mark, is a guy who came and helped me take the automatic gearbox and front subframe out of the My Mini over in the barn a little while ago. However, he has something else in common with me, apart from an interest in elderly minis, that's fallen out of there. Um, he also used to have a Unos Roadster. And that meant, is it gone? <laughs> it fell out of the envelope onto the seat of the Mercedes. He used to have a Unos Roadster, and that meant he bought for his Unos Roadster a lovely, this is like a really heavy duty bit of metal, lovely high quality Unos Roadster badge, because the Unos logo, because Unos is like a, like a sub-brand like Lexus that Mazda did, um, 
one of these things is what should be on the nose of my, my little MX-5. Stop focusing on me, focus on the badge, there we go. Isn't that gorgeous? And he very kindly sent that down to me to stick on my car because people keep on asking, why is your MX-5 slash Unos got a Lotus badge on it? And the answer is the previous owner was on the motorway one day and bizarrely his Unos badge which just fell off and bounced across the windscreen and disappeared into the wild blue yonder and he was working at somewhere with had loads of lotus badges so he helped himself to one and stuck it on there and people constantly said what a lovely lotus you've got after that so he just left it because he thought it was funny but i would quite like to get one of those back on there so now i can thank you mark and if you want to go and check out some quality mini content then go and find mark's youtube channel simpsons classics where you find many mini projects right what else have we got lurking a treat from the seat. Right. This one also addressed to Furious Driving, PO Box 477. Oh, license plates. We love license plates. We have this whole ambition to fill a wall with the things from all around the world. And this, oh, we've got Texas. It looks like a fairly recent one from the, the style of the pressing. Uh, MJL 9216, which is pretty cool. Whack that up there, I like a license plate behind me. And we've got another one, Minnesota. Taz 671, uh, May May 12, I think it is. Looking at the, uh, the date tags down there. Every state is different, so it's kind of hard to figure out, but, but that's be, I guess, potentially 2012. Minnesota, 10,000 lakes. I'll take the word for it. Okay, hi to Matt. I hope these make a good addition to your collection, buddy. Regards, John Brooks. Thank you, John. They really, really do. I'm pretty certain I've not got either of those two already because I'm trying to get every state in America and then every you know every country in the world. And there are some pretty random countries, if you're or esoteric countries, if you're trying to find all of them. That is brilliant. That is really, really cool. Thank you, John. So as I say, interesting. All the styles of all the American plates are totally different. They're all got that same size, but you know Texas is flat no picture just a little the lone star in the top corner little picture of the state itself in the middle and the lone star state but nothing particularly exciting minnesota has got sort of an in-between because some of them are quite interesting they've got a little picture of a kayak a couple of guys going fishing in a lake and they've got the whole pictures and everything and it's embossed which is you know really really cool when they do that so yeah thank you john that's brilliant much appreciated I need to go and move the alpha. I said the other day, I need to move the alpha so I can actually get into that wall area that I've started. Because I've, um, I've got a few over there on this wall, and I've got a few over in the barn, I'm going to have to take them off this wall and then work out what I've got. It's getting complicated. Too many things. Right, what else have we got? Lurking, treating from the seating. <coughs> this one is a house brick of sorts. You see, someone sent me some concrete, some magazines, or some tools. Uh, there is no return address on this one. Oh, I can see magazines. It has split, actually. It's magazines. So let's see what we got. It says, hi, Matt. Enjoy these magazines. Have a great Christmas and New Year from Lee Openshaw. Thank you, Lee. Oh, it's a tag for the British Motor Museum in September 2023, MX-5 Owners Club Day. So I'm guessing that's where this lot came from. And this is, oh my goodness, what a, what a chunk. What absolute chunk of stuff. Soft top, hard top, the magazine of the MX-5 Owners Club. I tell you what, I get a few Owners Club magazines and currently I would say the Mercedes one is the, the most like a magazine you would go and buy, but I had no idea that um, the MX-5 Owners Club was gonna be anything like as, you know, as serious. I'm like, oh, I guess the MX-5 is such a popular car. It's gonna be an absolutely enormous club with millions of cars in it. So they, they, can have, they can afford to do this kind of thing. There's loads there. That'll keep me, uh, keep me occupied for a bit. Gets a bit of inspiration. There we go. There's, a, there's an NA on the front of that one. National treasure. Oh, also, performance mini. God, I used to work for performance mini. Is this stuff that I've actually got working? I do one, hang on. God, Jamie, Jamie King. I used to love working with him. Well, okay, none of my work in that one, but I did do an awful lot for an awful lot of those magazines when it was Modern Mini and then Performance Mini and various other Mini magazines. So I've always been around Minis an awful lot for a long time, despite not owning any of the classic ones before. Now let's get back in the car. See what else we got. Okay, oop. Ow. Right, I my wrist in that one. So next we've got what I'm gonna suggest is a Christmas card, which has come from County Cork. Oh, Lifeboat. Actually, the second Lifeboat uh, charity card I've had this year, actually, funnily enough. 
to Matt and the Furious family. And Tony, thank you, Tony. And happy Christmas to you and all yours as well. And all, well done for supporting the lifeboats as well. Good on you. Thank you for watching and for commenting. Always appreciate all the interactions on the videos. Believe it or not, YouTube counts all those little interactions and pushes the videos more if you get them. Oh, only a couple more things to go. This has come from Gower and Lee Carburetta Specialists. Okay. Curious. Normally I know if I've ordered stuff from companies. And this is... <laughs> I couldn't not send you a couple of outer choke cable ferrules to fit your P6 SUHIF carburetors. I can't stand a bodge from Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. I don't know if you saw the last episode of the Rover P6 V8 going back together. I was missing a bit for my choke cable and I had to just hold it in place with cable ties so, so I can sort of test run it. And this, this is what I need to make it work. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. This is Gower and Lee carburetor specialists in Bushy in Hertfordshire. So yeah, if you've got any carburetor needs then give them a shout. I'm sure they'll be able to help you out with that. I'll go and Google them later on and see what else I need because I'm sure there'll be plenty more. There's one bonus one which I didn't expect to find or announce. This actually sent to myself by mistake. This is a period, I'm guessing 1960s from the artwork on the box, a warning triangle which I'd forgotten I had and it was actually on top of all the shelves and when I had to clear everything off to drill holes in the wall I discovered it and I was quite quite pleased to find this thing. This is a lovely bit of ephemera, the kind of nonsense I really really like and um, I suspect it came from my granddad's garage when we're having the clear out. So this is, oops, as it would go up. So if you've got your classic car, you brake down, you can fold that out and fold a little foot out so you can have classic breakdown experience if you do happen to conk out in your classic. And although it's kind of a, a non-real car on the box, I'm thinking it's actually a Vauxhall, isn't it? Protect your life, God, all purposes, no battery required. Economy, easy to handle. Can verify it is indeed very easy to handle. Now it's just one thing left in the car. One true, one more treat from the seat. And this has come around the world. This one has come all the way from New Zealand, the other side of the planet. Now I've seen a couple of these New Zealand air freight uh, envelopes now. I'm always quite excited to see them. And we'll see what we've got lurking in here. So these plastic envelopes are blooming hard to get into. So here we have, oh, I'm gonna guess this is license plates again. More number plates. Yes, they are. New Zealand number plates. But yeah, interesting how little they are, actually. I'm guessing they're pretty old. Bit of information in here. Ace, hey, so there is a letter. Phew. Yes, New Zealand plates. So you got the white one with black writing and the black one with silver writing, which looks really old, judging by the sort of style and weight of it. This one's a later pressed one with like digital writing on the back, so that'd be fairly modern, I guess. Let's read what the information says. Okay. Hi, Matt. I thought you might like these New Zealand number plates for your collection. They came with a car trailer that I rebuilt. The black and silver plate would have been made between 1964 and 1987. So I was semi-right, it was old. I thought it'd be old in that, to be honest. And the white and black plate is a modern in the last couple of years. Thanks for the entertaining content on YouTube. Have a great Christmas and Happy New Year. Alan in New Zealand. Oh, thank you, Alan. That is absolutely fantastic. And this is just the kind of random stuff that I love to find and to have in the collection. This is just brilliant. So I need to make notes of ages and things so I know what things they refer to in the future. That is so, so cool. So what an interesting little post bag. Not the biggest post bag, only about half a dozen or so odds and ends, but really, really cool stuff nonetheless. So we've, we've got a couple of Christmas cards and magazines so we can learn a bit more about MX-5s. We've got license plates in New Zealand and America. We've got the UNOS badge, the mini handbook. Really, really cool and useful stuff. So thank you to everybody for sending this stuff in. If you like this kind of nonsense, then please do hit like and subscribe because, you know, it makes it more all the more worthwhile doing it. So thank you everybody for sending this stuff in. If you've got stuff of your own to send in to join the, the party here, then it's, uh, you know, the address we said at the beginning. It is Furious Driving, PO Box 477 Aylesford ME69 LE, UK or Great Britain. Put junk in the trunk on there if you really want to as well. And don't forget to put a little note or something so I know who you are and what it is you've sent and why. 
So thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed, please always hit like and subscribe. If you've got more junk for the chunk, then send it into the PO box address. And don't forget, March the 9th, something big and exciting gonna be happening in Furious Land, also with iDriver Classic and of course Hubnut. So make a note in your diary and keep an eye on the social media. Take care everybody, see you again soon.